G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, Acrylic Guru from Australia. Welcome to my studio. I want to teach you what you can paint in acrylic. You see the size of the canvas there, and I'll also get some colours running up the screen that I choose to use in this tutorial. Now, if you're a beginner and you want to paint this and you can't do the layout of a boat, I will have a traceable in the description box below under the traceable link. So print that out to the size of your canvas and locate it accordingly. I'll show you how to do that throughout the video. All right, so let's get on over here and we'll get right into it. Now, I do not have carbon paper. I simply place this on the window and I can see the image from the other side shining through. And I got my lead pencil and just scribbled over the outside lines. So as I can place that on my canvas and print it accordingly when I use a red pen to trace over it. Well, I've got a horizon line there as well, just to indicate where you put the boat in your horizon area of your paintings. That's why that line's there, okay? If you want to use this or just freehand paint your own. Now I've got my craft paint and some retarder just so I can mix the hazy, misty sky and the water surface. So I want to pull that into this puddle of retarder. And I'm using my putter on a brush because it don't muck around, it gets things done. Okay, it's only a small half canvas. This one, it's an A4 size, so I'm going to just get the whole surface of this blocked in with this paint. Stroke it left and right like a pure gentleman. Now that's my horizon line area. In this one, it's an area. It's not gonna be a hard line. Now you work out what you wanna do in your painting. If you want this violety, um, lilac-y, reddish, orangey, brownie, yellow, whatever vibe you want. I'm gonna go for the color that I'm using now. Okay, I've got Prussian blue and quinacridone violet. I wanna have my sky, those vibes. So I'm gonna start with the Prussian blue and the color that's on my canvas is gonna lighten this up. And I wanna work out where I want it. So I want it about here, coming around scooping up here, I'll come up here. Now it's running off my brush, running away, that's okay. It's getting a bit lighter at the top. I'll pick up a little bit more, and now I'm gonna control where I'll put it, right across the top here like so. Turn my brush around. Pushing it into the canvas tooth. Now this, is going to do what it's going to do because I put the white paint there. Okay, now we'll just, I'll grab a smaller flat, just something I can sit that down into there with, there we go. And I just want to sit that into the white paint there as well, just like that. And I might, I'll keep it straight, nice, simple and straight. Now what I will do is I'll grab a, a smaller flat. I'll pick up this quadacrinone violet, but I want to lighten it a bit. It's a bit too strong. I want it to be lighter on the canvas. The paint that's on the canvas is going to make it lighter, but not light enough if I didn't add that white into there. Okay, we'll start here and I want to get this crisscrossed to that blue, just like this. Pick up some more, crisscross it to the blue. This is just the vibe I want. It's not a realistic painting, but it's gonna be a nice succulent vibe of a painting, I feel. Sit it out there, pick up some more, and up here. Now that white that I put on the canvas, look how it's allowing all this paint to flow across the canvas. It's really great. And when you know what to do, you can actually do it. Okay, and I want a lot more of that down here. So this is the water. I'm going to have this kind of left and right strokes. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab a blending brush, a kitchen cloth, and we'll see how we go. Uh, let's start here. I wanna pull these brush strokes and merge that color into that color and get rid of those lines, just like so. Come down here, it's a bit dark on the brush, so be careful you don't pull dark paint where you want it to be light. Now I'm gonna wipe that, and I wanna 
get this pulled out to there like so. Over here, get all this. Grinding it into the tooth of the canvas. Now it looks a bit funny at the moment, but when we start adding some white cloud figurations there, it's going to give it the vibe of bullshit. Which means greatness. So I want to grab some white paint. Now I've got my hog bristle fan brush and I want to load both sides of that up, chiseling it up and just work out where I want some cloud behaviour. So I'm looking here, I might just do this, get the bottom there and then start making a body of this, pick up a little bit more, but don't contaminate your pile on the palette too much. Turn it around, and I wanna create this vibe here. There we go, that'll do. Grab yourself a blending brush, a clean one. The one we just used before is filthy dirty. I wanna keep the bottom of this, and if anything, push those clouds up. So we'll get this one sorted, too easy. Now we'll get these ones pulled up. Pulled up. There we go. Now I'm just seeing here where that heavy blue is. I'll put a bit of that there just to break that up. There we go. We've got some simple cloud action. It's always good to give them a pull so they don't get that camel hump look in them. Now before this dries here, I want some beautiful cloud action as well. So I'll get something fluffing around here, just like that. And scooting around there like so. I'll stop for a minute. I want to soften all this down. Now my paint's getting ready to dry on me. It's quite drying quite quick today. So I'm just getting all this twisted and turmoiled adding brighter and duller values of that white, grinding it in. I'll pick up some more, right down here. What I'm trying to do is slowly create the horizon area. Like I said, it's a horizon area, and this one is not going to be a line. And I want a bit of brightness behind here so it makes our tree stand out. This is going to be covered up there. This is background stuff, but lovely background stuff. Now I'll just add a bit of yumminess to some of this, just in case we see, and we don't want too much of a flat looking cloud. So we just sit that there and then gently sit it down, leaving the vibrancy of it there, but blend it down in a way where it doesn't look wrong. That's looking all right. I like the way you did that. That's fine, it is too, yeah, I like it too. And I might just add a little bit of, I don't know, something here, a bit more brightness there. There we go. And I'll sit that down as well, getting in front of there, a bit brighter. Horizon line, horizon area. Now I just want to get the water to the values that I want. So to do that, I simply want it brighter over here on the bottom right. So what I'll do is I'll simply stamp that on like so, where I want it to be. And I'll use this brush and see if we can... There we go. I need something just along here I'm feeling, just to give a, the horizon area its own area, not a line. Yeah, I'm turning the brush that way. I'm happy with that. Simple, simple and effective. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my 
filbert brush, a filbert brush, and I want to put the size of my tree here, then I'll know where to put the boat. I don't want to put the boat in first and try and squeeze the tree in because the tree's the main hero in this painting, but the boat's going to complement the tree. And I want it from about here. Oh, I won't explain it, I'll just do it. I'm just going to grab this Prussian blue and work out. I want to come from about let's say here so I, I want to be below the horizon line so the horizon lines up this is not going to sit right on top of the horizon line and this is going to come to about there that's the width of it and I don't want it flat I want it to sort of taper down as well and then the whole shape of that land mass is going to be about there so to speak it'll make sense the further I go along and then we're going to simply come up I want to just simply trace a branch up there come up there 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 see how this filbert's doing a bit of nod and noting and this and that ish i like it but that's just so i know where to put me fauna and foliage now is this big enough or too big i think it's too big now I'm just going to start at the top here. I want this sort of, where are we? I'm using this dark colour to get the depth and then I'll put the, the appropriate highlights on it, okay? And it's just going to be a simple, effective piece of art. I want to do something about here. There we go. When you're doing this, don't blob it like big blobs. Try and get at those airy, sharp, tree-like shapes that you're looking for that we need in our paintings. And once you've done this, you can simply stand back, analyse it, and see where you need more or less of highlights and darkness and bits and bobs like that. Down here coming off this branch here now see this branch here this is what's connected to it all the way up here and now I just simply want to grab this get this to the height about there shaping my brush every time I reload it because sometimes it goes a bit iffity affity and I just want something tapering out hey, over here where the boat might be now I'll just simply map in the land mass that that's on so I'll stamp it on so it's going to stick shape this like the way I want Just something a bit different there. Just I like to scatter me. Get off there. Instead of that just being round, see how I've scattered it and I'll put another piece just coming here. I like to do that. It's just nice. I'm pulling some of that paint off me brush and from about here I want to see Some more on the brush pull it off just so as I can pull down a hint of a reflection so what I'll do is I'll you really want it like see against here and then pull that down and now that thick mess I'll continue that somewhere about here and that's it now just fix it up and we will put the water back in front of that just to sit it down now I'm grabbing a script liner and I've inked up a lot of that um, Prussian blue I've thickened up the trunks here here and there before I start highlighting everything and what I want to do just on this side here I just want to get some dead bits of 
additives here so what I'll do is I'll get the main branch twisting as I go that'll do and then let it fork out to nothing maybe get a little bit coming down here and the thinner you can get these and sharp as you can the better it just makes your painting look I'm going to get the main ones of these on as you'll see and then we can spider twig it till our heart's content meaning I'm going to get some in there as well later so everything's going to be crossed over now cross over everything make everything real fine and spidery and spindly and you might want to put just some thicker ones here or there just see how you go I'm going to chunk up a bit and join on I want something just poking out here now I'll give that a dry okay that's been dried you need it dry so you can sit the other colors of highlights onto that so what I'm going to do now that Prussian blue I'm just going to start making a lighter value of that and you can see from there how lighter it is and you play with it till it's the value you want and then we're going to start highlighting what we have up there so I'll start from maybe the tops and have a look in my monitor leave a lot of them darks there don't kill them all sit your trunks back as you do it and use this to make things in front and behind each other now see this trunk I want to make sure this is in front of that trunk just like that and then this can come in front of that one there leaving some darks there this is real fun and pleasing to do when you can do this and you know it's working for you now down here we want to make this let's say See, I'm leaving some of the trunk there. Now we'll simply dry that, analyze it, look at it. I want a little, maybe a little bit coming over there. There we go. It's going to clash with the sky, so be careful of that. And we'll just give that a gingerly highlight as well. So I'm going to grab some more white and pull over here now. Same color, just adding more white. Both sides of your brush so you don't get a a bright boo-boo as you're stamping it on okay and I don't want to go everywhere now less of this of what you just put on there Someone's tooting their horn. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of something in there. Now, so that doesn't look too flat, I want to get some speckles of light just glistening over it here and there. So to do that, I want to get mainly white, but I want it tainted with that colour. Okay. But it's going to look white on the canvas but it's not you can see the difference and I just want to grab this brush and hopefully just in one dollop put the odd leaf that's getting hit by light here and there just like that you see I'll grab my mouse stick so I'm not going to lean all over me painting I'll 
put something over here. Just so as one push is a solid enough leaf. And when I finish this procedure that I'm doing right now, hopefully you'll see how it's grasping just some light glistening over it here and there. Analyze it. And what this is also doing, it's pretty much detailing what you've just put on there to a degree. Now grab yourself a pen. I, I prefer to use a red pen. Find your horizon area. Mine is pretty much where those pencil lines are, so up there. Uh, so that's the horizon line, but I want this boat about down here and about that close to the tree. So about there. I'll just take that on. Now I'm not going to draw the horizon line, I just want to get the main shape of the boat so when I block it in with my flat brush I've got a decent shape. The front here, and you can see the red pen allows me to see where I've done and where I haven't done. That'll do. I've got some business there, but I can do that later. All right, let's take that off. There we go. Now, once you've done a traceable, the best thing you can do is grab a pencil and, you know, completely get it exactly how you, how you feel you want it to look before you start painting so as you won't feel confused. I'm just grabbing some white paint on a small flat and a small detailed brush so I can get into all these little nooks and crannies on this boat. It's such a tiny thing. So it pays to have some detailed brushes and I'll simply get these white bits blocked in And then I can darken it up accordingly where the shadows are. Blue out here. I mean not blue, sorry, white. Coming here. Okay, I'm just going to grab a bit of that mid-tone that I use there just to give the boat its colour and then I'll use um, a darker value to give it its darker value. So we'll get this under that line there. Just want something there. Now I'll grab the darker colour blue. And having the traceables just helped us line everything up. And I want some of this darkness right in the back there to create the illusion of depth inside the bow of the boat. Now get your darker colour as well, just so as we can get a bit of a shadow coming from the boat and scratch it into the water there. Left and right, not up and down, left and right, keeping it left and right, creating a shadow of the boat on the water. I'm 
I'm just blurring it now. Using this flat brush, I'll grab some kind of hint of a rope coming from the stern of the boat or the bow of the boat. I'm pretty sure the bow is the front. That can come down here, right into the water that's holding the boat in. Boom. That'll do. And it can wipe your brush, get all the heavy paint off it, and then in this direction, slowly just go like that. Boom. Get something up there. I'm just grabbing some white, putting the taintiest bit of blue in it, that tainted colour that we had, just so as I can, where was I? Oh, this side of the white, let's see if that's, we want it dirty white, just so it looks like it's in shadow. So it doesn't look so stark. Let's try and get this back white again, because I got too much contamination in it. There we go. And I could probably get a little bit of reflection on that. That'll do. Okay, I'll just autograph this and then we'll pull the tape off and reveal it. And I want to thank everyone who supports my channel as a member of Patreon or a member of my YouTube channel here. Much appreciated. And if you want to be like them and support my content, hit the join tab or hit the Patreon link. Links are in the description below. Tell me where you're from, who you are. Say hello and I'll say hello back. All right, let's have a look at this. There we go. That's not too shabby. A nice relaxing tree, boat, river, lake scene, whatever you want to call it. Very simple and easy layout and I know you can do it. Well, I enjoyed that. I hope you liked the video and if you did, you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, have a look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck and good on you. <laughs>